I need news. I pass the rest in tune to the source. W-O-C-A. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 W-O-C-A. Ocala! Twenty-five minutes before ten o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Still cool outside, I can tell, because people are wearing their coats. I'm wearing my coat inside. This is studio. It doesn't really get very warm, does it? Except in the summer, then it gets really warm. Uh, Alan Alan Ansorge. Alan Ansorge is in the studio. He has become a friend. He is a very prolific author. He has written so many different books, and uh, even included my sister in on a book. Uh, that he wrote one time, so he's uh, got a cl- special place in my life. Uh, and um, share something with Robin from Wisconsin, right? Am I remembering yes. that right? Okay. Yes, Kringle. Uh, and Alan is in the studio, which is which is always a delight. He is an award-winning, best-selling author. His new book is called Very Close to Home, and he's going to explain why Very is spelled V-E-R-I-E. It is a mystery crime novel and lots of guns and and, <laughs> and ladies and ladies, lots of guns and ladies. Yeah. A little bit of romance, a little bit of mayhem, <laughs> a spy, a serial killer, anything you want out of mysteries. That's I put right. it in this book. It's all right here. <laughs> so, how you doing? Very good. You look great. You look great. I feel good. How's your health? Much better now. You went through a bad time, didn't you? Yeah, I, I hit that uh, the coronary plague there for a while, mm-hmm. but uh, and now I'm looking forward to when I when I do head back north to St. Luke's. They're going to rebuild the shoulder. I have a oh. torn rotator cuff, and mm-hmm. they are telling me that I won't be able to type or anything because it's well. Let me put it this way: when the surgeon had a screen in front of him like you do now, and right. he hit the button and he looked at the picture of my MRI, he said, "Wow, that's a mess in there." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, is that technical doctor talk? And he said, that's pretty appropriate in your case. Oh, wow. So you won't be able to type. How are you going to write? You, you I don't know. I've been practicing doing things left-handed. Oh. Which you don't think about. You know? Right. And I'm amazed to find how little dexterity we have in your offhand. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. Like holding keys to get them into a door. <laughs> right, you, right, and right. getting the right one on the ring right. one-handed is really, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Wow. Oh, my so gosh. How, long, how far back did this start affecting you? Uh, uh, it always kind of ached, but I figure I'm not a spring chicken anymore. You know, yeah, I figured yeah, yeah. It, it was part of the territory. But then it got really bad, and I couldn't lift my hand up, and I couldn't move my arm back mm-hmm. like this. So who do you who do you write for? Who's who do you imagine is reading your books? I have found that very few people read my books. <laughs> really. Uh, yeah, with all, they don't with, read them. They that's buy not a them. good answer. With, with all the appearances you do and wonderful stuff. They buy the books. I mean, they, I sell a lot of books, mm-hmm. but the, I, I meet people. Your receptionist read my book. She yes, sure she did. did. Yeah, she sure did. She did. did. She's, you read she's yes. actually our boss. I don't think he reads it. He writes music. He's got talent. He, he wouldn't read my book. <laughs> <laughs> I do read your books. I, do, I did not read this one, though, I'll be honest yeah. with you. But I do. I've read your books. Mm-hmm. I, I, one of my favorite efforts ever, ever is the one that you sparked with the Christmas book. Mm-hmm. I, there would never have been a Christmas book if it wasn't for Doreen and my, my Oh, wow. Daughter. That's a sweet thing to oh. say. That's uh, a sweet when, thing. when you said that you wanted your sister to appear in a book, I said, well, that, and my daughter had just told me, you've never written a Christmas book. Why not? And so I said, gee, Christmas book, Doreen, and you sent me the pictures. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Seemed wow. like a natural. Wow, that's a sweet thing to say. There are some things that you do that you really like. Yeah, yeah. I like this book. So mm-hmm. let me ask the question again, because I didn't like your answer. Let's get a different answer. Okay. Like, when you're writing a book, let me put it on me for a second, okay, so that you better understand the question. When I'm writing a song, okay, I don't anymore worry who's going to hear it. I don't worry anymore if it's going to appeal to the to the masses. I don't worry anymore if it's going to appeal to young people or old people. I just write it and say, this is the best thing I've got right now. Just put it out there. If it does something, it does something. But when I was younger, I did. I wanted to write for the publishers. I wanted to write for the, for the oh. buying public and all that. So you've been writing a long time, so your answer must have changed... From Absolutely. Early to now. So, who are you writing for? When I first started writing, I wanted to be famous. I didn't care about making money doing it, but I wanted people to read my books. Mm-hmm. I wanted I wanted to go into Barnes and Noble and see my books on the shelf. 
you know, that, mm-hmm. that to me would have been just, and still would be the biggest kick ever. Yeah, yeah. But now I don't do that. I write for the characters now. And I find that if I don't write for the characters, I might as well just file that one. You know, I've got this huge shredder. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so that so that leads. To, I'm going to ask you again, if you don't mind me using my own experience and asking you if it, if our notes are similar. When I tried to write for publish, if I look back at those songs now, I say to Robert, "God, these are embarrassing. I don't even like these songs." Mm-hmm. The songs that I just wrote, just because I wanted to, like the book you wrote for Doreen, you know that. I mean, th- those are just those are the gems. Those are the ones that really. You know what? They happen so fast. I bet you you've written a song in seconds. In wow. reality, it was Wait. there in your head. The gist of seconds. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So is that true for a book too? Oh, well, some of them. the The first book, uh, <clears throat> Crossing the Centerline, mm-hmm. was the first in the Bay Harbor Mysteries, and it's yeah. the characters. I mean, one of the strengths. Six weeks. Done. Mm-hmm. But that's your go. your strength is in the character development. Hopefully, yeah. People to me are in my life. People that's are it. more important than anything else. That's it. You, we get to know people. If if I was watching a movie, I wouldn't get to know the characters as well as reading the words because you put so much into what that character is about. What's inside? What makes them tick? Not what they're wearing. Not what kind of car they drive. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and that right. kind of stuff. But, right. but 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 what they think and what they say to each other. And uh, that's very evident when you have um, Cynthia, Nicole, and Pamela. I mean, they're like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> in the at club, each other. I think yeah, it's funny. yeah, they're so great. They're just the, the, they're wonderful. The whole line range. about where Nicole keeps moving closer and closer to the wall. Mm-hmm. She's sitting at the bar, and every time a stool opens up, she moves closer to the <laughs> wall. <laughs> and then she finally says to her mother, "You know, when we came here, I didn't expect you to be the the life of the party." Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> so where did where did this idea come from? And this is this is. A a little bit of a uh, of a different kind of a direction for you, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, I'm doing another Bay Harbor book right now. Um, oh, wonderful! I, 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 Mac and I were just talking about it, and people are buying the book, and they're reading the book, and then they contact me on my homepage, and they say, "When are you going to write another Bay Harbor book?" They seem to have this thing with the characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the I'm sure. That's yeah. what it is. It's very they different. seem to be more likable than Very and that. And I had started the second Very book. And finally, mm-hmm. it, uh, you know, I'm a slow learner. The light went on when I had 100 and <laughs> 157 requests for the Bay Harbor books. Uh-huh. Oh, uh-huh. my. Harbor book. And you say nobody reads Since your books. Since this book came out. And you say nobody reads them. Why, why would you have <laughs> so many requests if nobody's reading them? I, I think that, that was the whole fan base. <laughs> <laughs> it included my sister. You know? <laughs> you're, supposed to, you're supposed to multiply. We're, we're always told for every phone call you get, multiply that by whatever number, thousands, and that's how many people are actually listening. So, is that right? Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. But but you have to. You're, you're a very versatile person, and you have elements in this book that you don't have in the uh, Bay Harbor books. Yes. Which and so you should have at least two different series because you you've written so differently with this one, but it still is an enjoyable read. I'm also writing a kids book. Oh, wonderful! You, <clears throat> That's great. Wisconsin is a very strange state. It is. It's a predominantly it's a whole other state. Yeah, <laughs> in another state of mind too. Yeah. But I was I was riding south through the state on one of the county roads, and I came over the top of the hill. And as you know, Wisconsin was formed by the glaciers, so it's mm-hmm. all up and down, up and down all the time. And I came over the top of this hill, and there's a little red barn on the right side, you know, like a hobby farm, and a, the old farmhouse, probably built late 1800s and that stuff. And standing in the doorway of the barn is a camel. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. And I was driving my Mini, and I hit the brakes, did a U-turn, went back. Yep, that's a camel. Well, actually, it's a dromedary. So I oh. pull it over, a and dromedary. I get out of it. The, yeah, they have the one hump. Oh, okay. Oh. Animals have two humps. Oh, I didn't oh, know that. Oh, I didn't know. Neither did I until I met Sydney. <laughs> and, uh, got out of the Mini, walked up to the fence, and the camel came walking out of the barn up to the fence. We stood there and looked at each other, and I said... Hi, Sydney. How are you doing? And he kind of looked at me and nodded. And I said, <laughs> How come you're here? <laughs> yeah, that's the basis of everything that writers write. Why? How come? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I decided that I would write a kid's book. And it's about a little boy who has to move to his grandparents' hobby farm because he loses his parents. 
Oh, man. And Sydney becomes his friend, and Sydney talks to him, but no one else. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a wonderful Alan premise. Alan Ansarge is in the studio. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Wednesday, mostly sunny, breezy, and chilly. High 56 to 60. Clear and cold Wednesday night with lows in the 30s. Sunshine tomorrow, a little milder in the afternoon with a high of 60 to 64. Friday, partly sunny and becoming warmer with a high of 70 to 74. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. For some, Valentine's Day means flowers and candy, not for us. Join us for the Valentine's Day Massacre, February 13th at the Southeastern Livestock Pavilion. For seven scheduled bouts of live professional boxing entertainment. Each bout is highlighted with local boxers. So come out and support the future boxing of Cala. First bout starts at 7 and doors open at 6. Proceeds to benefit the Boys and Girls Club. Tickets start at only $15. Get your tickets at Central Florida Boxing, 1032 Southwest First Avenue, or call 352-292-2103. Hospice of Marion County has an urgent need for volunteers to share a conversation with someone, run errands, hold someone's hand. All you need is a willingness to help others. Our volunteers believe the blessings they receive far exceed the services they offer. Will you consider serving, caring, and making a difference? Call today, 873-7441. Hospice of Marion County, making more moments of life possible. Hi, this is Vanessa Lane Jennings with the Jennings Law Firm, located here in beautiful Ocala. Join me every single Friday at 1030 for Legal Lane. We'll be discussing various legal topics such as family law, criminal law, contracts, and much more. So this is your chance to call in with your legal questions and have them answered. That's every Friday, 1030, right here, WOCA The Source. Hi, Matt Wilkerson here, your mobile Verizon rep. But not just here, I'll deliver the phone to you in your home. While I'm there, I'll only sell you what you need and I'll personalize it to you. Want to have me get you connected? Then call me at 352-528-0020. I even offer unlimited home phone service for just $20 per month. Just call me, your mobile Verizon rep, at 352-528-0020. W-O-C-A 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 AM 1370 96.3 Your source for the number one sports weekend Fox Sports only on 96.3 FM, 1370 AM. All right, Alan Ansorge is in the studio oh, making me want to cry. Marvelous. All right, uh, Alan has uh, such one. a talent for writing. And uh, if you go on Amazon, you'll see all of the books he has written, and, and you'll get to know those characters. Alan, there was something I was watching. Did you ever watch uh, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, the Jerry Seinfeld thing? Yes. That he does? Okay. I think it was either the last one or one of them. Where he, they were talking about somebody who died, a comedian who died. And I think it was with... Uh, um, oh gosh, Gary Shandling. I think it was with Gary Shandling, and he says something about you, when he died. All of that comedy, all that work that he he did, is all gone now. It's not. It's not anywhere. It, and and I thought, isn't that interesting? Because it's true for all of the people who create. If, if you create these characters, when we go, when we die, all of our creativity does not really die. It stays here. I, I can read books by people who've been dead 300 years. Mm -hmm. And those characters that they created are still alive just by reading those words. And th that'll be true. So these characters that you've created, my sister being one of them, or a, 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 a similarity to my sister with the same name. I mean, that's, that's really touching. I would, one of the specific things that has happened out of the request for a new Bay Harbor book is they said, said of course, Armas and Gibby going to be in it. Oh, those those two guys are so funny. They are you. Uh, uh, actually, wonderful. the Moss and Gibby thing kind of was you guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, can you put your headset on and then you'll be able to hear a listener calling in to uh, chat with you? Let's make sure that you can hear me first. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on the air with Alan Ansorge. 
Hello. Hello. I hear, I hear nothing. They hung up on me. You, are you there? Probably. Uh, no, it says there's somebody there, but then okay, we can't hear a word you're saying. Uh, <laughs> but but Moss and your fan base right there. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> but Moss and Gibby are just so cool characters. I mean, they see something's wrong, and in their own way, they want to make it right. They bring out their guns. They you know <laughs> do stuff like that. And but they're but but then they you you get those two guys in in like the cafe with with the ladies and stuff. They kind of like. Mm-hmm. disappear and yep. <laughs> things you know in the back like ooh <laughs> don't want to mess with them <laughs> uh, I think uh, the scene where they're in uh, in the squad car with mm-hmm. the, the, the the two cops at that time before they made detective are driving them to the soup kitchen mm-hmm. and he gets in the car and he's got the garbage bag and when he goes to get out of the car he's dressed in a tuxedo mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, and Moss is saying to him I know you like Tchaikovsky but I think you really ought to start with the beer barrel polka yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think, to me that was just you know it's, it's a classic but those characters because of the height differentiation mm-hmm. and that um, the, actually they were kind of loosely based on you <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Alan, uh, give us the uh, the movie trailer version of the story in Very Close to Home. It's about a uh, chief of detectives whose uh, wife has left him. Um, and he's shopping in a grocery store, and he has a coronary incident. And the first responder is a female police officer who has just graduated to riding solo in her car. And she comes to the grocery store, and she puts aspirin into him and basically saves him. Mm -hmm. And when they get him to the hospital, she finds out he doesn't have a gun, he doesn't have a badge, anything. And she knows who he is, because she's aspiring to become him. Uh uh And uh, they look at the security uh, tapes of the store, and they see that someone was going to shoot him with his own gun when he went down, and that person had stalked him into the store. Oh, good. So the chief of police realizes that somebody was hunting him, and so he wants someone to protect his him because he's a vital part of his police department, the chief of detectives. Oh, that's a good... And so he asked for a volunteer to protect him, and the two-year cop does because she wants to become the best detective ever. That's the whole basis of it. And so she seeks help from her mother, who is a, an MI5 agent out of England, and she says things like, Oh, I hope we don't have to shoot someone because I just changed my clothes. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> or she says, if you need someone shot, I'll do it. I have diplomatic immunity. By the right. time they get me to trial, I could be back yeah. over the ocean. She They're says a good to team. she says to Barry one time, uh, he said something about or no, her assistant was there and she says, um, how how are you going to get home? And she says, "Well, I'll walk across the ocean like I did the first time." Mm-hmm. <laughs> she just she's a very entertaining character. Yeah, Cynthia and Nicole are who they are wonderful. Yeah, and then and and having a Broadway star mm-hmm. who takes a hiatus to work for the C- the the MI five agent. Mm-hmm. That and that the fact that one time the detective says to Cynthia, he says, you have an office and a staff? And he, she says, looks at him and says, you didn't think they'd sent me over here myself to conquer the country? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> she just, she's a funny lady. Wow, wow. So, so in, in developing the characters, um, it's, so now you have a new line, even though you, you said you stopped short of writing book two. But you have a new line of characters, and yes. these, and this is this is probably a whole new area for you. And I noticed you didn't put your name. Is that why? Because this is a new character. It's A. E. Ansarge as opposed to Alan Ansarge. And it caused no end of problems because when the book came out, and Amazon, Amazon had pre-orders on the book. Um, this is I'm not going to say how many because it really sounds like bragging. But they had a substantial amount of pre-orders for the book when it came out, and then it didn't sell. Because nobody knew who A.E. Ansorge was. Ah. And that was a suggestion my wife made, who was no longer on staff. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you change it, or once it's done, it's done? It's done. Oh. It's copyrighted under A.E. Ansorge, and so it will be that way forever. <laughs> so, uh, when, so when you write these characters, 
Is it always going to be A E, and yep. then and when you go back, okay? Mm-hmm. So the other books will still be Alan. Yes. Now you did mm-hmm. something um, with the cover also. That's yes. uh, that was done by a very special person in your life. Yes, I have a nephew uh, named Richard Barkley, and everybody calls him Arby, and uh, he's a musician in Arizona, mm-hmm. and works full time for the city of Mesa, and then he also plays excellent guitar player and a guitar collector. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's an expensive hobby. And uh, he is also an artist. He paints very mm-hmm. well. Nice. I and I asked him to do the cover for me. And I described the characters to him. And then I sent him the first five chapters of the book. And he sent me the cover. Mm-hmm. And then I paid him a whole lot of money because I felt it would be unfair to not pay him if I would have had. <laughs> I paid him exactly what I pay would pay anybody to sure, do it. Sure, sure, mm-hmm. makes right. sense. Yeah, you know, yeah. which is probably underpayment for an original oil painting because then he gave me the original. Oh, yeah. how wonderful! Yeah, right. And I have that in in my office up north. Oh, how great! Yeah, that's so wonderful. You're a snowbird, right? Where do you live here? No, I'm a taxpayer. A taxpayer. Yeah, I'm one of these fools that comes down here and pays taxes, sales taxes, property taxes, and that stuff. Right. So everybody that lives here year-round doesn't have to pay income taxes because of <laughs> we affluence from up north come here and pay taxes. That's right. <laughs> yes, but, so where's home when you're not home? Uh, when it, I'm not here? I can't remember. Is it the villages? Yeah. The villages, yeah. Okay, okay. It is now, yeah. It wasn't originally. We were, we were outside of the villages, and then I, had a, I bought a home. Oh, yeah. With a pool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was paying somebody 12 months out of the year to mow the grass. And oh, to no. Take care of the pool. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, and uh, Shane sat there. At, Shane is the brains in the group, you know. And she, <laughs> she looked at me and she said, She's beautiful. Alan, could you live in a smaller space? And I said, Space doesn't really make a lot of difference to me. I mean, I, I have built my own desk, and it's big enough to hold the computer. <laughs> That's a, all you need, right? <laughs> and a printer underneath it. That's it. It's uh, This is my office. It's mm-hmm. 22 inches wide. And uh, and she said, I think we ought to get a smaller place. Mm-hmm. She said, there's no point in paying for all of those services if we're not going to be here to uh, enjoy them. Mm-hmm. So we started looking for it. We listed our house, and we had planned on living in the house for that year. Because sometimes we're here all the time uh-huh, uh-huh. and uh, for the whole year. And uh, we listed the house, and the people that lived behind us had had a party in their pool area. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there, some friends of theirs, and there was an open space between the houses. And some friends of theirs that, that they had known, he's a career military, and they had met in the military, were there at the party. and. She said, boy, I'd really like to buy a house in this area. About uh, two months after that, we decided to sell. And the realtor put the sign up in the window. It was only like 22-inch sign. Mm -hmm. And the woman behind us drove by on her way to her house. She lived in a cul-de-sac on the back side of us. And she saw the sign, and she called her friend up, and her friend came over and took out a checkbook. She walked through the house and wrote out a down payment for the house. It sold wow. while the real estate person was standing there. Oh, wow. And then we didn't have anywhere to live. Oh. Gosh. Her husband was getting a house r- ready to sell in Carolina. She oh, called no. him up, and she said, uh, I bought a house. And they had this agreement. There wasn't going to be any pool, and there wasn't going to be any yard. <laughs> And so we're sitting and waiting on tender hooks to see if he's going to come in and squelch the deal you yeah, know, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. for two weeks. He walks into the place. He said, this is fabulous. Uh-huh. I love this. Oh, no. You did great, dear. <laughs> oh, wow. We'd like to move in next week. I said, I'd like you to move in next week, too, <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> so then we started looking at this thing where they come and they put all your stuff in a bag. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. You know, And then they take it somewhere. Yes. <laughs> By the way, and we That's were going right. to live in a hotel. <laughs> uh, t- till and then we t- I had a friend of ours a lady we've known for 47 years who was in the villages uh-huh. and she said why don't you go and buy one of those little villas and just live there until you f- find a house that you want to buy mm-hmm. she said uh, there's a lot of them for sale there's a lot of them for rent you can, you can go do that and I found out they were renting for $3,000 a month oh my and I said because it was prime oh. season oh and I oh. said well oh. 
<laughs> I'll buy it. You know? <laughs> might, well, yeah. What do you want for it? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and it worked out really well. It has a brick courtyard and that stuff. I don't have uh-huh. any grass. It's all stone. And, oh. And it's smaller and it's fun. Well, Alan, you're more than a guest. You're a friend. Gosh. Thank you so much for, for that friend. friendship, for coming in as you do. And Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to see you guys. I have a copy of the book. Am I allowed to give it away? I have two of them. Call me if you want a copy of Alan's book. 622-9622. We'll give them away. Otherwise, go to uh, AE... Is it AEAnswers.com? Or Alan. Or AlanAnswers.com. And, of course, on on, uh, Amazon and Barnes & Noble and all the other places books are sold. We'll take a little break. Be right back. 1570 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. GOP candidates turning their attention to South Carolina the morning after Donald Trump's victory in New Hampshire. John Kasich placing second, but the battle for third was brutal. Senator Ted Cruz, Governor Jeb Bush, and Senator Marco Rubio all finishing